Hello and welcome to Money Control. I'm Kaizad Adajanya. Budget 2023, we're just uh, a month and a half away and you know, wish lists and recommendations are flying thick and fast. So I have with me over here today, Lakshmi Ayer. Uh, Lakshmi is the head of Kotak Investment Advisory. Uh, she was earlier the head of fixed income and products at Kotak Mutual Fund. Uh, and Lakshmi is going to tell us about uh, budget expectations, uh, her uh, expectations from the budget 2023. Lakshmi, hi, welcome to Money hi, Control. Hi, thank hi. you so much. So Lakshmi, let's start by um, uh, talking about the most uh, discussed topic uh, uh, as far as the budget expectations are concerned, which is the capital gains tax rationalization. Now, you've been in the business, uh, Lakshmi, for a long, long, long time, and we know that this has been coming up uh, regularly in the past few years, but as time goes by, this has been uh, uh, coming up even more and more. Uh, so, you know, uh, as far as capital gains are concerned, uh, yes, there is a, a lot of discrepancy between different instruments. So, you know, your listed debt instruments, your listed equity instruments, uh, threshold is one year, uh, your real estate threshold is two years, debt funds is three years, whereas, you know, people say that, you know, debt funds are basically for shorter duration, equity funds are meant for longer duration. So, um, what can be done, uh, Lakshmi, and what would you like uh, as far as capital gains is concerned? Uh, so, you know, you hit the question right on the nail because, you know, this is something which has been debated and every time there is a recommendation list that needs to be sent, uh, this kind of, you know, tops the list. Uh, so, I would say two parts to it. One is there is a, an asset class wise, uh, you know, categorization as far as capital gains are concerned. There also, if you see debt listed debt versus debt mutual fund, there is a divergent taxation and of course, equity and real estate as you rightly uh, alluded to. So, uh, what is coming across from an industry feedback or you know, talking to investors is that uh, A, can we look at a regime of just a short term capital gains and a long term capital gain? So, that is kind of rationalizing and simplifying the entire thing. It could be agnostic of the asset class. So, that is one school of thought. Uh, agnostic of the asset class. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's one school of thought. The other school of thought is at least within a cluster of say an asset class have a similar treatment. So these are the two ways to look at it. So you could probably retain a one, two, three uh, kind of a tenor, but have a rational tax, uh, you know, slab or a tax regime for a particular asset class. Now, I see merit in both. Honestly, if you ask me, I do see merit in the former also that you have, um, and of course, they need to do the math to see where the exchequer can gain or, you know, benefit or maximize. But, um, I think that's I, also a big, uh, it's important. It's important. It's important. Yeah. So I think that's where we are right now. So it'll be good to see at least one step in that direction. Maybe too ambitious to expect all in a day. Uh, I, I don't think that could be pragmatic. But yes, at least giving a consideration and saying that something of this sort, uh, you know, can see the light of the day, uh, including some of the schemes, you know. So if you are going uh, basis and exposure, then how should the taxation be versus just looking at the net? So I'm saying all of that, I think, requires, uh, you know, a complete wipe off uh, from the mind and then reassessing Re something. Yeah, things. rethinking. That's so right. maybe, you know, it may not necessarily be done on the budget day, but you're saying that at least if a mention is made uh, in the budget speech and it's the exercise can start so that the rationalization and capital gains tax can happen over a period of time. I, Fair enough. Yeah. Lakshmi, what about, um, uh, you know, any, any expectations on the infrastructure bond Front because you know investors, especially fixed income investors. I mean, they they look at investments uh, uh, fixed that give you fixed return very closely uh, because we know we have a large retirement population. Also, we have a lot of senior citizens also, and at the same time, uh, you know, the government also needs money and funds to fund the infrastructure projects. So, infrastructure bonds. Uh, I've been wanting to ask you. I mean, uh, you know, as a former fund manager, I mean, you've been tracking debt markets very closely. Do you think infrastructure bonds can be looked at in this uh, budget? So I would say the need of the R today is to find ways and means to fund the capex related growth. I think that's been a long standing you know, demand from an industry standpoint, especially from the markets. The last two, two and a half years, specifically the pandemic phase, uh, we actually saw a phase of uh, increased spending, but not necessarily capex related. So I think it is time to reverse that equation right now, given that by and large, normalcy is coming back. Um, to the industry, especially on the medical front, and given that bulk of the population is now vaccinated. So I think uh, within that capex, obviously, infrastructure is a key thrust. Now, do you want to do an infrastructure bonds, which is a taxable bond, or you go in for some tax-free bonds? Uh, again, tax-free bonds are something which uh, Very you know, have been conspicuous by their absence yeah. from an issuance standpoint. 
Now, given that you know the interest rates are kind of peaking out, you might just about be at the end of the tightening regime. Is it time you know for some of these instruments to make a comeback? And uh, trust me, they are hugely popular. So you will see a nice um, a set of investment uh, you know entities which can be actually interested in something like this. That should be quite interesting. It should be, and as I said, if the thrust is going to be on capital expenditure, then some of these bonds will have to make a comeback. Because if you see a Bharat bond, for instance, I mean that's been some sort of a success. I mean, because that that was again an in initiative of the government of India through Deepam, Correct. and you know that vehicle also now has uh, you know brought public sector government companies closer to you know the retail bond market in 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 the way making it efficient for them to borrow. Absolutely, and what it's done is because of the basket approach, it's brought down the cost to a more you know uniform level, which couldn't have been if you know if these entities went and borrowed on you know based on their individual silos. So yes, something on those you know can we create a pool of these and make it in the form of an offering or as I said issue some uh, you know tax free bonds uh, with this kind because something like that really entices and captures the public or the investor fancy. Right. So yeah I think it, it is time to think a little bit out of the box and yeah we may not have uh, uh, you know to wait for too long so let's wait and watch. Yeah, right right. Lakshmi what about um, section 80C? I mean, uh, you know, again, a very popular uh, tax reduction, tax benefit basket for the retail investor. Um, you know, there are two views over here. Of course, one view, the popular view is that, you know, you have to enhance the Section ATC basket because there are too many instruments within the basket. So every, like you talk to any mutual fund, you talk to insurance, insurance will, will say that, please take out my uh, basket, uh, the same product from the basket and put, give it a separate Section ATC thrust. A mutual fund will say, please take out ELSS and give a separate thrust for that. So, uh, and, and, and the more popular view is that there are too many instruments uh, stuck within that one and a half lakh limit of section ATC. So should that go up and you know as opposed to let's say the other view which says that the new income tax regime must be popularized so which means that all these deductions and uh, so-called tax benefits must go its tax structure should be simplified. Where do you stand? So you know I would say India is still at uh, the cusp of uh, you know the equity culture and I'm talking about you know the financial literacy and the spread of financial inclusion. So to that extent, uh, something like an ATC which allows you for the tax benefit is very good, um, I would say catalyst to even push a first timer to say that for example, uh, you know when I had my cousin who started earning her salary in about two years, I actually initiated her into a tax free uh, in an ELSS scheme. I told her that look this makes you know imminent sense. She didn't even bother to track it because she doesn't belong to the financial services sector. But when you tell her this is one avenue that you can save tax and at the same time let your capital grow. There is a growth potential that excites you. It's a catalyst as you Absolutely, it's a very strong catalyst and whatever we started as a momentum of spooling in this retail money from the savings culture to the investment culture, I think that should sustain. Sure. So to that effect, I think the government can be mindful of not really disturbing the apple cart. You can get creative but um, that creativity should ensure that this objective is not stymied. I think that's very important because we've come a long way from where we were maybe five, seven years back. But are we there where probably the rest of the developed world has reached or probably some of our emerging market counterparts have reached uh, as far as the entire household savings getting funneled into financial asset classes, especially equities? I think we have miles to go. Okay, okay, okay. Um, you know, how um, uh, is NPS, the National Pension Scheme, uh, looking, uh, you know, from a budget point of view? I mean, national, there's, there's been a certain amount of quietness around National Pension Scheme in the f uh, past uh, few years. But, you know, some, uh, uh, some corners of the country are now clamoring for old pension scheme to come back. And National Pension Scheme, obviously, is a very progressive scheme. The one point of contention over there, Lakshmi, is that the annuity income is taxed. Do you think it's time to for the government to take a budget to take a look at the annuity income, make it more uh, tax friendly in the hands of uh, investors? See, that can be looked at, you know, because that kitty has just started to grow. If you look at it on an incremental basis, in, in terms of the product, it's one of the best products that any one of us can have in our portfolio. Uh, it's extremely low cost, one of the lowest priced uh, financial products. But the awareness quotient, again, is very, very poor. That's the problem. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's in that sense of fledgling, trying to make its uh, space in the big daddies of the world. So it's okay to give some incentive for a small time and probably, you know, re visit it at every point in time just to say if that nudge helps you to grow. Uh, another thing which we need to keep in mind is that most financial products are actually a push product. 
very seldom you find these as pull products. Right. So, you know, this also will actually in that sense qualify as a push product. So, anything that requires a push, requires awareness, requires some sort of an incentive. A catalyst, so, as you said. Yeah, yeah, as I said. So, I think therefore, if you look at it from, uh, from that balancing point, how much more you can sweeten a strategy without really costing. See, ultimately, you have to weigh the balance between you know the cost and benefit so if the benefit is going to surpass the cost incurred which could be a meager cost it's very well worth going for that okay last couple of questions uh, lakshmi oh, how should an investor approach um, uh, his or her portfolio as far as budget is concerned i mean any steps that uh, we should take before the budget or during the budget or even after the budget how much uh, does it uh, impact uh, an investor's portfolio and what should be the portfolio strategy for budget 2023 so honestly, if you ask me uh, as a personally on my portfolio, do I make any changes at all pre-budget? Answer is a clear and bold no. And I'll tell you the reason why. But what follows prior to that is a proper and a detailed, uh, you know, look at the portfolio to see how well diversified it is. And based on one's risk appetite, how much of it is in the risk asset class, which is equities or, uh, you know, the real estate kind of funds or for that matter, fixed income, which is a safer and the most stable kind of a thing. So once the broader allocation is okay and you ensure it's reasonably diversified, I don't think there should be that tendency or that temptation to keep touching the portfolio every time there is an event so yes be mindful that there is an event uh, under you know coming under your way but do you really need to be excessively worried about making a change specifically to suit a budget I don't think that is required so have a nice diversified skew so if you are doing um, uh, say equity mutual funds make sure you have a nice balance of a large cap and mid caps because you know uh, if, if the SME or the MSME sector gets a thrust there could be some of them in the non large caps you know in the mid market space which could be probably an immediate beneficiary and percolation of that could happen into the listed space as well some of the sectoral things are something which you know but but that doesn't mean you you know kind of skew your tour yourself towards a thematic portfolio so I think on balance a uh, focus on diversification focus on asset allocation and most importantly don't give in to the temptation of doing something just for the sake of it or just because you want to be seen as creating you know some kind of a portfolio differentiation ahead of an event that's really not important. but there's an additional angle to it this year because the sensex has hit an all-time high so there are a lot of investors wondering whether they should take the money off the table or whether they should just continue and especially people who have money right now to invest fresh investments so you know the answer for that Kesad, is very simple so for example if you have 70 30 70 percent in equities and 30 percent in fixed income and for because of the current market moves you 70 has actually become 72 whether there's a budget tomorrow or two months down the line make no mistake just remove that two rupees which is your discipline and plow it back into fixed income that is the way when you maintain that balance unless you decipher or you have to decide that oh you know now over the past maybe three or four years my risk appetite has changed and therefore I don't mind being 75 in equities uh, and, and 25 in fixed income then your action required is very different so I think that's what you need to keep in mind because bulk of the returns that the portfolio generates is due to the right asset allocation not really because of doing this uh, you know flip uh, you know churn in the portfolio so what you're saying is just keep an eye out on the budget just be mindful of the tax changes but your asset allocation your diversification is more more uh, important than anything else absolutely bang okay. on thank you lakshmi for uh, talking to us and giving us your insights on budget 2020 thank you that's all from us folks today for more news views and uh, updates please keep logging on to moneycontrol.com